on the Wink News Nightbeat. He threw the officer to the ground so violently. I mean, it just, it was awful. And they would just started punching him and hitting and hitting and hitting. A deputy fighting for his life. I thought he was going to kill him. Until a mysterious armed man shoots his attacker. I heard three shots. The man on top that was sitting down on top of the police officer fell to his side. Investigators combed the area near the corkscrew exit for clues and kept the ramp closed for nearly nine hours. When I was on the highway before I got up on the exit, uh, there was a high-speed pursuit on the left shoulder. New video of crews towing three vehicles, including that speeding car and a Lee County cruiser, and new questions about stepping into help. There are a lot of different questions that need to be asked before you can really answer whether or not he's going to be, be liable for something. The Night Beat now bringing you complete team coverage of every angle of this story. The Night Beat's Kim Powell with new questions about the armed man who some say saved that deputy's life. Well, let's start tonight with The Night Beat's Adam Wright. Live where all of this unfolded. Adam, that ramp is back open tonight, right? Yeah, that's right, Chris. The ramp here opened back up about four hours ago. It's all quiet out here right now. Much different than the chaotic scene here earlier today. Traffic to Corkscrew Road started moving freely just after 7 o'clock tonight, after deputies shut down the southbound exit ramp for several hours. A massive scene unfolded shortly after 10 a.m. I've never witnessed anything like that. It was awful. Multiple sources tell Wink News Lee County Sheriff's Deputy First Class Dean Bardez was working an accident scene on I-75 near Alico Road when a man with a gun approached him, then took off. Uh, there was a high-speed pursuit on the left shoulder when I got off on the highway onto this on-ramp, off-ramp. Um, there was a... A man on top of another man. Witnesses tell Wink News the suspect started beating Deputy Bardez in the middle of the off-ramp. He threw the officer to the ground so violently. I mean, it just, it was awful. And they would just started punching him and hitting and hitting and hitting. I thought he was going to kill him. Then, sources tell Wink News a passerby with a concealed weapon license got out of his car and shot the suspect three times after repeatedly telling him to get off the deputy. I heard like two to four gunshots when I was sleeping. I look out my balcony and then I see all the cops right there. The suspect died. Deputy Bardez was taken to the hospital. Tow trucks later left the scene with the deputy's cruiser and two other cars. And Deputy Bardez is out of the hospital recovering tonight. The sheriff's office has not released the name of his attacker yet. And a lot of other questions remain unanswered, specifically what led to this confrontation between these two men. Of course, we'll continue to dig for these answers and bring them to you as soon as we get them. For now, we're live on the night beat. Adam Wright, Wink News. Now. All right, Adam, thank you. Sources say the man shot the suspect three times and all new tonight. One expert says that could come into play. You're going to look at that as a factor. Mm -hmm. Did you need to shoot three times? But you don't second guess, and the 2020 hindsight is easy. The Night Beats Kim Powell picking up our team coverage with that angle of the story. Kim. Now we have a lot of unanswered questions about what unfolded out here, but experts tell me that if this bystander truly believes that there was imminent danger, then his actions are justifiable. Hero. That's what many people are calling the driver who sources say shot and killed a man attacking a deputy. We don't know everything that happened yet, but I mean, if you're defending a police officer, <clears throat> you know, obviously people would think you're a hero. Alex Dean is a firearms instructor. He says the law permits you to use deadly force to prevent a forcible felony. In this situation, sources say the suspect was beating the deputy and the deputy was crying out for help. Every single circumstance is going to be different. You, you, there's no blanket rule where you can say, hey, do this in this circumstance and do that in this circumstance. It just doesn't work that way. A criminal justice professor at FGCU says there's a lot of questions that need answers before we know if the shooter can be held liable. What is the mental state of the person involved? What's the mental state of the person who actually did the shooting? What was the condition of the officer at the time? Another factor that needs to be looked at, why did he fire three times? When you're in the midst of a situation, what is reasonable under the circumstances? And we don't know. Did one shot stop the man from, from harming the officer? 
Maybe not. Did the second shot stop him? Maybe not. You don't fire at somebody who surrendered. You don't fire at somebody who's fleeing. And we still don't know who the bystander is just yet, but of course you can count on Wink News to update you on any new developments as we get them. Live on the Night Beat, I'm Kim Powell, Wink News. Now. Kim, thank you. Our team of reporters brought you live coverage all day today, even when we weren't on the air, posting video and new information on Facebook the minute it broke. Wink News got to this scene 20 minutes before any other station in southwest Florida. Count on Wink News to continue to aggressively follow the story. And remember again, when we're not on the air, we're constantly posting updates online. Breaking in the last 20 minutes, a crash shutting down traffic at a major Cape Coral intersection. Police say Santa Barbara southbound and westbound Veterans Parkway will be closed for about the next 90 minutes. We're still working to find out if there are any injuries. Count on Wink News for any new updates as they come in. Also breaking tonight, Wink News just learned the names of the two people found dead in the Jamaica Bay community. Lee County deputies say Richard and Francis Downing were found on Villa Court yesterday. They tell Wink News they aren't looking for any suspects. Witnesses said last night it was a possible murder-suicide. Count Wink News to update you with any new developments in this case. Also breaking tonight at 11, New York City's former mayor is the favorite to become Secretary of State now. Sources telling the Associated Press tonight that President-elect Donald Trump will tap Rudy Giuliani for the nation's top diplomat. A senior Trump official says it's his job if he wants it. This weekend, Trump named Reince Priebus, Chief of Staff, and Breitbart Executive Steve Bannon as Chief Strategist. Also developing tonight, more protests and some unrest across the country from anti-Trump protesters unhappy with the president-elect. This is some new footage from Seattle, where people are spilling into the streets, but very peaceful and still there. Also just in, though, new video of a man tackling a protester. Watch. Oh, you don't oh, love to compromise. That's footage just in from Ohio State University. The crowd reacted by beating up on the attacker and yelling, shame, shame, as police let him out. New video just in tonight of a scary Collier County crash. An elderly World War II veteran veers off the road and flies more than 40 feet into the woods. His OnStar called 911, and investigators say if it hadn't, it's unclear whether anyone would have found him. Emergency crews say he's a little shaken up tonight, but otherwise, he's all right. Just hours from now, a judge will sentence this convicted child molester. 75-year-old Nelson Sanderson is facing two life sentences. You might remember authorities arrested him in Nicaragua after nearly four years on the run. Count on Wink News to be in the courthouse tomorrow. And tomorrow marks... 18 years since this Naples teenager disappeared. Wendy Hudicock snuck out of her parents' home to go to a party in 1998, and her family never saw her again. This is a picture of what Wendy could look like now in her 30s. Investigators are still hoping someone will come forward with information that will help to crack this case. New tonight, deputies are searching for a suspect who opened fire into a crowded car. Investigators say another car pulled up next to the victims and started shooting out of the back window. It happened Friday night here on 12th Street. One person went to the hospital with cuts from shattered glass. Also new tonight, an East Coast man accused of ripping off locals looking for a deal. Deputies say Brian Maroon said he was selling gift cards for half price on Facebook, and a North Fort Myers man spent more than $550 on those cards. All of them ended up being empty, except for one, which Maroon had used to trick the man into thinking they all had cash value. Maroon is now facing four fraud-related charges. All new on the night beat, after more than a year of hammering out the details, Cape Coral City Council gives the go-ahead to a major development. But not everybody's happy with the plan for Seven Islands. Night Beat's Bob Ursic here covering that story for us tonight. That's right, the plan to develop this part of northwest Cape Coral, as you see it right here along the way, that'll allow the development of buildings of up to eight stories tall. And that's what most of the speakers tonight didn't like. The 48 acres could also include shopping parks, a marina, and entertainment rivaling the South Cape. But several homeowners in the area are worried about how the major development will impact their neighborhood. But I can tell you that everybody I've talked to in my neighborhood, we live in the Northwest, is not happy camper about it at all. They don't want any development, period. People in, in the Northwest really believe that you are ruining our neighborhood because we bought into this not to have high rises, not to have a destination point. We hear you, and we do. The charrettes were absolutely so we could get your input. Absolutely. The problem is we have 185,000 people that are in this city, and it's a city-owned property. 
Now, the news press reports that the city still has to decide whether to develop the seven islands themselves or to turn it over to a private developer. On the Night Beat, Bob Berzik, Wink News Now. All right, Bob, thank you. New tonight, every time you hit the road, you risk running into a huge expense. How a small fender bender can cost you beyond the initial repair in less than 10 minutes. A few raindrops today. Still a chance for a couple of showers overnight and in the morning with this band of rain working its way toward us. Details on that and colder air in about a week. So now you're grabbing my food away from me? A veteran's meal snatched out of his hands on Veterans Day. All new right after the break, how the restaurant is responding tonight. You're watching Wink News at 11, Southwest Florida's most watched 11 o'clock news. Well, then, if you didn't see it, oh, you no, now you're grabbing my food away from me? Oh, you taking my food away from me now? Okay. Okay. Yes, sir. Yes, I did just provide documents to you, and they saw you. You may have seen this on Facebook today. All new on the night beat, Chili's under fire for confiscating a free meal from a veteran on Veterans Day. It happened at a North Texas location after another patron raised some questions about the veteran's service. The man said he even showed the manager his military ID and discharge papers. And he said, sir, we have guests that say that you're not a, a, a military uh, veteran. I said, excuse me? This uh, overzealous um, uh, manager comes out and instead of talking to me man to man, he treated me as if I was a black man stealing a meal. Honestly, that's what it looked like. On a statement, Chili's president says that manager has now been removed and that she personally called Walker today to apologize. We have the full video of the exchange up right now on the Wink News Facebook page. Hopefully somebody said thank you to him, too, in the process yeah, of all Yeah, thank you for our service. My goodness, and on Veterans Day. Yeah. Let's bring in Chief Meteorologist Jim Farrell now. We saw some rain today, a little yeah. bit. A little bit. Uh, cars wet in the back lot here. Okay. Chance for an early shower in the morning. It should be dry but cloudy most of the day. And we've got some colder air to talk about just a bit here. First up, let me show you the rain. Live Doppler radar. You see that band of rain up around Tampa Bay. Right over the bay, and you can see it stretching into just south of the I-4 corridor. That's part of the rain area that uh, is not in southwest Florida now, but this will be migrating southward slowly overnight tonight. So we could wake up to a couple of light showers. Light would be the key early in the morning. And watching also a few showers already south of Collier County. These are tracking in toward Monroe County. So there will be a few sprinkles overnight tonight in a few neighborhoods. And then we'll look for cloudy but mainly dry weather in the afternoon tomorrow. Temperatures are dropping into the 60s right now. A few spots still in the low 70s and it's near 70 in Fort Myers. 69 degrees, relative humidity 78 percent. It's a north northeasterly breeze. It's light but anything out of the north, any air coming out of the north is generally cooler air this time of the year. So 71 degrees right now. Naples with cooler air on the way for all of southwest Florida as this weak cold front pushes southward. Got a new air mass moving in on that northerly breeze. So it's going to stay cloudy tonight and tomorrow morning with a chance for an isolated shower. Cloudy most of the day tomorrow, but temperatures will be dropping off just a bit. At first, then getting colder in about a week. Low temperatures Wednesday and Thursday in the 50s, so that will be noticeably cooler. High temperatures, not as much of a change. Tomorrow with clouds, 78 degrees, mainly due to the lack of sunshine. Then bright sunshine and near 80 degrees through the early part of the weekend. It's not clearing out yet, as you can see. Clouds still from Gainesville southward to uh, the Keys, and that includes all of southwest Florida. So we wake up to cloudy sky, the chance for an isolated shower, and 65 degrees. Now, not a lot of rain in the morning. Here's our future track forecast model. There's a little band that'll be kind of draped across the area around 8 a.m. So the chance for an early morning uh, shower, but certainly a much better chance for clouds most of the day tomorrow. And then six very sunny days in a row. Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Even Monday will be sunny, but look at the temperature early Sunday, Monday morning. 49 degrees. That's the coldest so far this season, and that will be colder air in southwest Florida in one week. All right. That's enough to wake you up. Thank you, Jim. A Wink News exclusive tonight, a Lehigh Acres mom says a creepy man exposed himself to her young daughter. On Friday, a man in a dark green SUV tried to lure the 11-year-old girl on Genoa Avenue with the man's jeans unzipped. 
the ordeal traumatized this family. The mom spoke to us today, but she's too scared to show her face on camera. She didn't want to sleep at the house. She doesn't want to be here. She's too scared. She's afraid he's going to climb through her window. She's terrified. My other daughter is terrified. Neither one of them want to live here anymore. So far, deputies haven't made an arrest in this case. Only Wake News is hearing from the family of a young boy killed in a tragic crash. Police say a driver hit 12-year-old Antonio Martinez while he was riding his bike on Tropicana Parkway. The Wake News Nightbeat broke this story on Friday night. Tonight, the boy's family says he's brightened every room he's ever walked into. He was a clown. He was very lovable and affectionate. Always smiling. Love family. Love this family. He just always knew how to make someone feel better when they were sad. The driver in the crash is cooperating with investigators. There's no word yet if he'll face any charges. A close call for kids at this Fort Myers daycare. Deputies say a woman slammed her truck into Rita's daycare on Carolina Avenue, but thankfully this crash didn't hurt anybody. The woman says her blood sugar acted up, causing her to lose control. Well, where you drive, what you drive, how many miles you drive, all of those are factors into your car insurance. So is the cost to fix your car. Wake News Call for Action reporter Lindsay Sablon breaks down those costs and looks into why it's costing so much more. When it comes to knowing a thing or two about the cost of car repairs, this shop knows it all. Bumpers, somebody run into the curb. Dave Pulthus has been doing this a long time. The other one we get a lot of is pulling out of the bank of the grocery stores and hitting the posts that are sticking up. Car after car in his parking lots waiting on parts to be repaired. Collision repairs have gone way up. Parts is driving the cost. The Insurance Institute for Highway Safety says the cost to repair your car has jumped 3 to 7 percent a year in the last three years. And that cost is felt in your auto insurance rates. Staff at IIHS who run safety tests say one reason repairs cost more has to do with the makeup of your car. The best-selling vehicle in our fleet is the F-150 Ford pickup. That has recently moved from steel body to aluminum body. You can see the aluminum body in a crash test. IIHS says it's lighter and more fuel efficient, it's just more expensive to fix. Only certain shops that are certified for aluminum repair can even touch that vehicle. While the labor cost for body shops is regulated, Paulfus says right around $46 an hour, the gadgets in your car are costly. If you have a car that has the backup sensors or the park assist, all of those are expensive. A sensor is $150, maybe $200 per sensor. Paulfus gave us an invoice for a 1990 Chevy sedan and a 2016 Chevy sedan. The older car has six options. The new one, 66. All great features until you have to replace or fix them. No matter what you buy, it's going to cost you more. I'm Call for Action reporter Lindsay Sablon, Wink News Now. Another thing driving that cost, with the newer technology, it can take body shops longer to repair your car. For example, the body shop owner we talked to says replacing a bumper now compared to five or ten years ago can take anywhere from an extra hour to an extra four hours because there are sensors and snaps that, make, that take more time to dismantle. The Buccaneers pulled out a big win yesterday, but the first half of head coach Dirk Cutter's press conference today dealt with a national anthem controversy started by one of his best players. Plus, the Eagles have the top scorer in the nation. That and more coming up next in Wing Sports. The Bucs beat the Bears yesterday to improve to 4-5. and five. Tampa's just a game and a half back of Atlanta for first place in the NFC South. Star wide receiver Mike Evans sat during the national anthem to protest president-elect Donald Trump. Evans says he means no disrespect to veterans. He also says he plans to continue his Trump protest during the anthem. That's not about the Republican Party or Democrat Party or anything like that. You know, it's just who he is. And uh, it's well documented you know, what he's done. You know, and uh, I, I'm not going to stand for something I don't believe in. I'm, uh, I'm disappointed for that. But again, I also respect Mike's freedom uh, of uh, speech and freedom of expression. Cutter says he's been texting with Evans and he plans to speak to him face to face on Wednesday. The Bucks have a tough one at Kansas City on Sunday. The college football playoff committee will release its rankings tomorrow night. There's likely going to be a shakeup with three teams in the top four losing on Saturday. Alabama has dang near already locked up a spot in the final four playoff, but some other teams 
now have some new life, like Louisville, Oklahoma, Penn State, and West Virginia. They're back in the conversation. Fort Myers high grad Christian Brown had a big game for one loss, West Virginia, in that win against Texas on Saturday. A huge hire for Florida International. ESPN reports that Bush Davis will leave the network to coach FIU. Davis turned around Miami in the late 90s before leaving for an NFL job. He's 64 years old now. The FTCU soccer team has the most goals in the nation, and junior Albert Ruiz is a leading individual goal scorer in the country. Ruiz is from Barcelona, Spain. His improvement from one season to the next has been remarkable and a testament to how much the sport means to him. If you put the work in, the results are going to come. It doesn't matter if you put your swing guards or if you step with the left foot, whatever you want. If you don't work hard, you have nothing to do. The Eagles won the conference tournament on Saturday, which advanced them to the big dance. FGCU found out today it will play at USF in the first round of the 48-team tournament. That game will be on Thursday. The Eagles actually beat the Bulls 3-2 in a game last month. The Dunbar girls basketball team won a state title back in 2011, and really they've been good every year since. Tonight, the Tigers tipped off the regular season at Cypress Lake, and Cypress Lake led for most of the first quarter thanks to FSW commit Shantiria Banks. But here... LSU signing Dykirie Patterson. She took over. Patterson, 33 points as Dunbar gets off with a win. 70 to 34 was the final. The Giants have a one point lead in the Monday night football game. That's it for sports. Wink News will be right back. Thank you for joining us tonight. The Late Show with Stephen Colbert is next. The news continues at 4.30 a.m. Sleep well, everybody. We'll see you right back here tomorrow.